I always bring the show. I'm entertaining. I'm fun to watch. Every time I fight, nobody wants to miss it. I'm just fun. I'm in there. I'm gritty. I'm nasty. I'm scrappy. And I always bring the show. I'm the queen of bare knuckle. You know, I'm here to teach everybody. Like, I feel like I'm gonna, they say sunner, but I'm a daughter her. Taylor Sterling probably will not want to be a bare knuckle fighter after I'm done with her. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm Christine Misfit Faria. I'm fighting out of Florida. When I won the BKFC world title, you know, it was all my dreams and hard work and um, dedication coming true, all the sacrifice, everything that I have done over the years coming into one moment. And, uh, oh man, it's that feeling. I just, I can't even explain it into words, but um, man, it's, it's, you know, something that I didn't know if I was gonna be able to achieve or didn't know how far I would go in my career. And I, I did it. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain the feeling, but I'm super grateful. I feel accomplished, but I'm still very hungry. So for me, champion behavior is something that reminds me to check myself. So if I'm not running or I'm not getting up, I'm being lazy, I'm being disrespectful, I'm coming out of pocket for something, I just check myself. Champion behavior, snap back, snap back to acting right, sacrificing, not eating the bullshit. You know, just you have a short period of time to accomplish goals in your life and they pass. I don't want those opportunities to pass for me. So for me, I've made up that, that saying, champion behavior, to remind me every day, champion behavior. It's not that I'm perfect or I think I'm better than anybody, I'm above. It's literally to check myself into being a champion. And if I wanna be a champion, if I wanna uphold myself in that way, I have to remind myself every single day with that to try and get better every single day, 1% better. That's something else that I say is 1% better. It, you're not overwhelmed. Okay, I went and ran today, or I did my training today. Okay, be satisfied with that. My name is Taylor Killer B. Starling, and I'm fighting out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. I got the name, the nickname, the Killer B from one of my previous teammates. She's a heavyweight professional fighter and professional wrestler, and we would have to spar, and I'm obviously a sizable amount smaller than her, and she used to tell me that I was just like a little bee that kept on stinging her when we would spar. I didn't have a nickname for the longest time, and she christened me with the killer bee, and it's just stuck ever since. It's the, it's the vibe, it's the vibe. I've always been a fighter with just like the biggest heart, and when I go in there, I fight with my heart, and that really showed in the Teresa Segala fight. Women's 125 pounders, the bell in round number one. Coming right at it. Black and yellow for Taylor Sterling. And the rapid fire start, solid black for Teresa Segala. Straight oh, right hand, wow. and down goes Teresa Segala. You see the punch down. Right hand down for the second time in this fight goes Teresa Segala. And to be honest, like before that fight, I kind of was just like, I don't really know what's good, what, what I want to do with my career because I fought MMA, boxing, kickboxing. I didn't really know where I wanted to go or where I fit in, but when I first saw Bare Knuckle come about, I wanted to fight for Bare Knuckle so bad. And it just was years of me like really wanting to do it and never like taking that jump. And then finally I tried to, and I just didn't get accepted right away. And finally I got the opportunity and it was like, once I was in there, I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And yeah, that fight changed my life forever. And I'm so thankful, it was so awesome. <laughs> Like I said, she's very ambitious and, and she wants this with everything in her. She's training her ass off and I know that. She can take damage. I've watched her, her kickboxing fights. I've watched her bare knuckle fights. She can take damage and she has stamina and endurance and I'm prepared for that on every level, on top of skill, on top of IQ, on top of experience. I think she's young in the game. I think she's about to figure out that there's levels to this. She's about to be extremely schooled. I'm gonna show her so much. Right now it's my time to shine, it's my time to be the example. And I really think that there does need to be a change in how these females are presenting themselves and in the sport, what is getting attention. We're here to entertain, but at the same time, we are here to be an example and to show young athletes 
that are fighters. We're here to fight. We're not here to dance around and, and be clowns. All along this journey, after I fought Teresa Sagala, I just kept saying, like, I'm going to fight for the world title one day. I want to be the champion. There wasn't a women's champion crowned yet, and I said, I want to be the first. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but once Christine became the champion, I knew I want to fight Christine. Nobody else wants to fight me. Like, what else makes sense? I'm undefeated. Um, no other name to me makes sense to step up against Christine Ferreira, and nobody else is going to step up to Christine Ferreira, but I'm not scared of her, and I want it so bad. So... Of course, I had to stir up the pot a little bit on my own to make things happen. And I, I do think that if I didn't do that, it, I wouldn't have got my opportunity. But I'm hard-headed and I'm stubborn. And I just hammered away at it until I got what I wanted. And that's to fight Christine Freya for the title. To win the world title for me, like, I am a, I'm a goal-driven person. I'm, in, I'm very goal-driven, so all the time I'm making goals. I remember the day, like, the, back in the day, I used to just dream about being a professional fighter and then just climbing up the rankings. I wanted to be a known professional fighter and I wanted to become a world champion, and now it's right here in front of me. And I have two boys that every single day I'm just trying to teach them that if you don't give up and you work hard and you're nice to people that you can get whatever you want and I just have that right in front of me so it would mean the world to me like a lot of people think it's about you know money or fame or anything like that like I literally want to win this belt so I can just come home and give it to my kids and just like show them that like I did this and I did it for you and you can do anything you want. I'm better than Taylor Starling in every aspect, mentally, physically, emotionally. I'm stronger, I'm more developed, I'm more experienced, I'm tougher, I can take hits. I can do everything she can do 15 times better. After this, you know, I think she, she needs to go back to the, the drawing board and, and really uh, evaluate her skills. I fear no man, no woman, no animal, nothing. Like, I, I'm a fighter. This is my job. What am I doing calling myself a fighter if I don't want to fight the best in the world? At the end of the day, she's just a walk and talk, another human being. She's a fighter. It is what it is. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be scared of her just because she looks intimidating or talks a lot of shit. Like, that's, that's all just outside stuff. Yo, Taylor, I know you think about this every single day. Trust me, when we go face to face and I throw a jab or a one-two on you, you're gonna realize your nightmare came true.